Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com. And today we're gonna to continue talking about how to really take control of making and saving selections. The topic this week is selection building. Now I know if you've watched the last video, I told you very clearly that the pen tool is the way to go. It gives you the most control. Well, with certain shapes, that's actually not the full story. Because if I were to try and make this shape, it's actually kind of a tricky pen shape to make. Probably it's not gonna look perfectly circular. But if you really take a second look at the shape, you might see some basic primitive shapes at work. And in fact, the way that I would really start this is with a big circle and this other circle. Now you can see where the two overlap becomes negative space. So you're sort of using the red one to subtract from the yellow one. So let me actually do that with the yellow shape on its own layer. I can control click on that. That's just a big circle. And then if you hold down Control and Alt, or Option on a Mac, on the red layer's thumbnail, it subtracts that selection. So now the selection I have on a new layer is yellow minus red. And the result is this moon shape. So clearly making two circles, positioning them over top of each other, and then a couple keyboard shortcuts was a much faster way to reach this moon shape. And this yellow and red shape is actually something that we're gonna see a lot. So let's jump into this document right here, which is a really precise image, but it's also flat. So I don't have any layers to help me select these really specific areas. But if I wanna make this little semicircular ring around the gain knob, I don't know, a different color or lighter or darker, I need to be able to select it very carefully. So the way I usually start my selection building is I'll make a layer group and I'm just going to lower its opacity to about 50%. Next, I'm going to make an ellipse that is just a shape with a fill and no stroke. So this is a vector shape. So I'm going to draw out the big circle. And what I want to do here is change the color of this to be yellow so that I have a consistent pattern going on. I know that yellow is the shape I want, and I'm going to subtract red from that shape. So I've made yellow. Now I'm going to duplicate that just by dragging out a copy. And I'll change it to red because I want to get rid of red. And then I'll just free transform it to be the right size. So quickly you can see here what I'm left with is getting closer to that target. Now I'm going to make a rectangle here. I want that to be red. You can see that's on its own layer. And I'm actually gonna duplicate that and free transform it to make this last little gap. So if you have free transform active and hold down control, you can just skew these, move each little corner point on its own. So clearly I've gone way outside of the boundaries with this. But if you can see what I'm doing here, I'm just using this shape to cut out this little gap here. So I'm gonna to add together all the red ones, and you can do that in two different ways. One way would just be control click on one, and then shift control click, and shift control click. So that's just keeping them as their own shape layers, and using add to selection, the shift key, and now you have all the red. A different way to do that would just be to grab those three layers and hit control E, and now they are a single shape layer. And I'm actually gonna do that for this example. So now I want yellow, control click on yellow, minus red, control alt click on red. And there I have a tight selection. So I can hide all this and then do whatever I want. Here I'm just gonna do an adjustment layer and maybe I'll make the whole thing darker or I could make the whole thing lighter. So right now I've just isolated that area in the image and then it becomes so easy to paint inside of it. So I'm gonna speed up the footage on this one but I'll show you it's a really similar process to get this big area. So I'm going to start with a rounded rectangle. And then once I have one of these individual shapes, I know there's multiple, so I can duplicate them out. And then I draw my circle on top as red. And then making my selection is as simple as control click on yellow. And then I want to subtract red, so I control alt click on the red one. And there I've got my selection very precise, and now I can do whatever I want to it. So here I'll do darker and change the color, or maybe lighter. 
So when you're building a selection, the pen tool is always a good approach. But sometimes an even better approach is to look for primitives and to look for combining different shapes together to quickly assemble a more complicated shape. I call it selection building, although I don't know that there's an official term for it. But I really encourage you to give this a try. Pull out an old image of yours that has precise shapes and try building some selections. This is going to seem abstract at first, but it's very powerful and worth learning. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.